So there's currently a blast of cold air which came straight off Antarctica. It went northeast across the Southern Ocean, it went northeast across the Pacific Ocean, and it hit New Zealand. So this morning, in October, which is spring, it was snowing here at the farm. But how do we keep our farm warm when it's snowing? Well, let's take you through what I use and what I have installed to keep the place nice and toasty. So in total, we probably have about 25 uh, kilowatt of heating capacity um, through heat pumps or air conditioning units. We call them heat pumps here in New Zealand because they heat and cool. Um, out the back of my office here, you can see you've got two here. These are green, these are Chinese ones, um, these are all right. These were installed recently. Um, these are just the outdoor inverters and inside on the high wall are the heat pumps for them. Uh, this one goes into my office here. Now this is uh, an 11 kilowatt of heating capacity here. Um, and this heats my office and the area around my office. Um, and this one here it just heats my lab or cools my lab. It's not really used to heat my lab, it's used to cool my lab because um, uh, we all know that a lab in summer can get awfully blimmin' hot. So the whole point of this tiny guy is to keep it cold. Now that there is uh, 3 kilowatt of heating um, Capacity, we'll just tell you what the heating is. The heating and cooling capacities are actually slightly different. Heating capacity, yeah, 3.2 kilowatt. So we've got 11, we've got 3.2. Then we've got this one down here, this old Panasonic. So this Panasonic feeds into my um, incubation room. So behind this wall here is my incubation room. It's all insulated really well. Um, that keeps the incubation room hot and cold. It generally, it's generally always trying to keep it cold because um, the mushroom blocks themselves actually heat up that room uh, significantly. Um, but that runs in there and keeps it cold. It doesn't work that well. It, I often go in there and I find it's like stopped working. I don't know if it's getting low on gas or if it's just an older heat pump. Now to heat my actual farm, the atmosphere and the growing of my farm, we've got this big bad boy here. Sorry, I lie. This one's 11 kilowatt of heating. The big one down there is 8 kilowatt. So I was um, pulling a leg for that. So it was an 8 kilowatt, a 3.2 kilowatt, a, I can't remember what I said for that, incubation room one, and then we've got an 11 kilowatt here. So this one, that air on this is very, very cold. Um, this will be going into its reverse cycle um, today a number of times um, because this thing will ice up. But that gives me 11 kilowatts of heating there. Um, that one, it's in my last videos, you guys will have seen this before. That's what heats the farm, uh, the main air going through it. So it... It's nice and toasty warm in here. In here we've got this guy here, um, big heat pump and that heats in summer and cools in winter. Um, and then we humidify out here and that air there goes into my uh, fruiting rooms. Um, so that big one takes up the heating for the fruiting rooms. We'll come into the farm and have a look. So here we are inside. Um, you can see up here, these rooms, that door's open, shouldn't be. Um, so the, that big heat pump gets fed in through those big ducts up there and straight into these um, fruiting rooms here. You can actually see a bit of condensation on the glass here because in this room here with that door open it won't actually be um, uh, that warm, it'll only be a couple of degrees in here. Um, and obviously in there is probably, oh, I reckon probably about 16, 17 degrees inside there. Um, so that big heat pump outside keeps those rooms nice and warm. Now, in here is where my Panasonic heat pump has to work. So if we come into my incubation room, here in my incubation room here, and um, we can see on the wall up here is the Panasonic. So that's this little Panasonic one here. Now that's um, set at 21 on the wall here, um, and that blows straight down. I get it to blow straight down. It's not really blowing right now. Straight down into that fan down there, and that fan blows it straight back up, and that helps mix the air. Otherwise, you get a bit of a heat differential between the top and the bottom of the room. You don't want that if there's a one or two degree heat differential on the top and the bottom of the room. Over like two weeks of incubation, the bags at the top can actually outpace the bags at the bottom. Um, so we don't like that. So we like to have um, that fan in there mixing everything around. The CO2 in this room builds up quite a lot as well. Behind the, I don't know if you can see it, that says uh, 2,700 ppm. So there's a wee bit of CO2 in there. We never actually close this door. We always keep it slightly open to let that CO2 out. Um, we come down here, we go into my lab. My flow hood will be on. In my lab here. Turn that off so we can hear. So up there, there's that tiny one up on the wall there. Now it's actually reasonably warm in here. In summer this place will just cook off, especially when you turn this on. I don't know how much uh, wattage that um, fan there is, but it actually does heat this room up uh, uh, quite a lot 
I, I run this for most of the day. I come here in the morning and as soon as I start, I basically turn this flow hood on and I just keep it running all day. And the point of that is to make sure this room's always really clean. I can come in and I can do something and then I can hop out um, when needed. So that's that tiny one. And then finally the large one out here on the back of the wall down there. You can see that big guy back there set on 16 degrees. Um, I have that always running as well. And the reason I keep that always running is because I do like to um, incubate. If I, if I spill out of that room down there, I can actually incubate just in this whole area here. right? I don't need to um, just have everything in that room incubating. Um, and what I, I, I often do pull, like this rack here that's been pulled out, those bags have been sealed, but it just means it's not getting really super cold in here um, throughout the night on cold days, and also so we can cool. We're about to start going to summer very shortly, and it will get reasonably hot. Um, this area here will start cooking off, um, so we will use this large one here to keep the place cool. So that's how we uh, keep our farm warm in the cold season. Um, to keep it cold in the warm season, all these heat pumps just go in reverse and they basically start acting like air conditioning units and they keep everything uh, cool. Um, the stuff down there, it's pretty easy to keep cool. The actual fruiting rooms are a bit more challenging to keep cool. Um, um, their, their heat tends to creep up in summer. Um, I've got that big 11 kilowatt out there, which I think the cooling capacity is usually slightly less. It might be like 10 kilowatt cooling capacity. Um, that should hopefully be able to keep it fairly cool in these two rooms. The only problem is obviously the, the air can come through these rooms so quickly that big heat pump simply doesn't have time to get that air temperature uh, low. Um, but it will be the first summer we're going right through with that big heat pump and everything working as it should be here. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how it performs. Our heat pumps outside here, uh, these two we've got down here, um, if you want to know how much these cost to install, uh, they're about five and a half thousand New Zealand dollars for both of the units um, installed. I don't really want to directly uh, compare that or uh, uh, exchange that to US dollar. Right now it would be around the low mark of probably 3,000 US dollar because our, our dollar is so uh, garbage to the US dollar like another, a lot of currencies around the world currently are. Um, when, the, when the New Zealand dollar was a bit stronger, it would have been maybe like 3,700 US, 4,000 US dollars, 3,700 US dollars to get these installed. We are under a really rapid growth phase here at the farm. Uh, so what I do every month, you know, everything we earn gets to put straight back into the business to facilitate that growth. Um, you can't really grow if you don't spend money. Um, uh, if you want to pull money, if you want to start a farm and you want to pull money out, um, basically you don't grow um, and not until you get to the size you want to be right so the more you want to be able to extract from your farm the more you have to put in to grow and then once you grow to a certain point you can start uh, taking that money out well, that's how I feel um, well that's how I've had to do it here uh, so each month we uh, we spend quite a bit of money on growth um, Here's a fridge which we just got, which isn't hooked up yet. I've just finished, um, I've concreted in the corners. There's a big pad right under the centre of it. This is a new chilli unit which we've got here. Um, so this is for chilling our mushrooms because we've simply run out of fridge space. This here was 10,000 New Zealand dollars to do. Um, and that was a kit set, so 10 grand just for the kit and then I um, install it myself. I put it all in myself. You can see it's not it's not up and running yet. Um, it's still got plastic over the outdoor unit that needs to be covered, so it's out of the rain. So a few tasks that need to be done still, um, but that's so we can cool, keep our mushroom kits and our fresh mushrooms cool because we'll run out of space on the inside in our fridge. We absolutely chocker our fridge out each week to the point where we just don't have enough fridge space. Um, so this is another big expense. So this expense plus the heat pumps that was over fifteen thousand uh, dollars there. Um, but we simply, we simply need to spend that money uh, uh, to be able to make that money, basically.